So as usual, I'm working on a 16 by 20 and I've uh, grounded my color with a nice gray color to kind of kill all that white on the canvas. And uh, my sky is really simple. I'm just using some ultramarine blue and some raw umber, a little purple for the, for the blue portion of the sky. And then just uh, introducing a little bit of, uh, of alizarin crimson at the bottom. So i um, making these really distant trees here now and I'm using my filbert brush for this just kind of trying to outline the basic uh, shape of this tree. And I've mixed uh, my standard gray color which is ultramarine blue and uh, umber, a little purple, and um, kind of achieving that, that little gray color there. The ocean color is again just that same mixture of, of uh, gray uh, with just a little bit more uh, blue mixed in there as well. I actually went in and added a little bit of turquoise, drying that up with my blow dryer so I can continue to, to uh, speed up the drawing and continue to paint. I'm starting in acrylic, of course, as, as many of you know who've viewed past videos. I like to start with acrylic and then I'll end in oils. So I'm going to go back over uh, these trees now and um, kind of reshape them and using my small little round uh, 20 over 0 brush that has a really nice tiny head on it and I can create some leaf structure uh, around the circumference of, of these tree formations here. And um, then I'm going to re-go over all of this and, and uh, I kind of add a little bit more purple to that gray. Um, I'm wanting to kind of darken it up and remove some of the brush strokes uh, that are there. Many of you know that I like to use Golden Open acrylics and oftentimes uh, with Golden Open they, they do dry slower than traditional acrylic paint, uh, but I need to go over them again. So I'm using my airbrush just to kind of add a little bit of a haze and, and really kind of set those trees back a little bit further as well by uh, really kind of changing the value, lighting them up and pushing them back. So coming back here with the next layer of trees, these are a little closer now and using my crimson and uh, using a little bit of, of uh, carbon black as well just to kind of gray that out at the bottom. And once again, same, same basic uh, process here of blocking in and then adding some structure, adding some individual uh, leafing, and um, really just trying to form these trees. I'm adding a little bit of holes through the canopy here, just using that same light blue mixture as the sky, and um, just kind of bringing a little bit of uh, some, some holes as if you can kind of see through uh, the tree a little bit. Now I've gone back to my crimson color. I've added a little bit of white, a little bit of orange, and uh, I can kind of start to form some of the individual leafing and add some dimension now, add some depth to these trees. So I kind of want to use some different colors here. I've mixed blue and, and green to form this kind of nice dark olive green and uh, then at the base of that I've used some carbon black just to kind of darken it and shadow it a little bit better. Make sure I have a good transition from light to dark there and then I can now paint in with my rigor brush uh, some trunks and some 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 limbs and uh, Going back into that same green mixture and adding a little bit of yellow and a little white, uh, I can start to form some individual leaves and uh, kind of clump up the, these leaves a little bit. Kind of want to skip around. Really want to try to use your your underpainting as much as you can and uh, really think about your negative space so that you're you're really capitalizing on on this underpainting. It's really important to do that to really add some really good depth uh, into these trees. But 
continuing the exact same process, blocking in, then forming the structure, and then going back over it to remove brush strokes. Of course, I'm using the blow dryer to speed up the process again for myself. And, uh, and then just go ahead and add those trunks and uh, then begin to, to add those, those additional uh, lighter leaves and continue to try to build the, the basic structure of these trees. And that's kind of the process that I like to use uh, when, I, when I tackle something like this. So I've gone in and mixed some lighter turquoise here now uh, by adding a little bit of titanium white, a little bit of ultramarine blue with that turquoise to add this little bit lighter uh, foam and some breaks uh, in the waves. And um, now I'm going to begin to work on this crashing wave um, and, and really just kind of add a little translucence here. I'm just dry brush blending that lighter turquoise color uh, on top of that and starting to form the crest of the wave and by, by using just lighter, uh, just lighter white and, and uh, a little bit of yellow mixed into that. And um, it's nothing to work too much on. This is a, just pretty basic. I uh, just want a little bit of a crashing wave here. And now I'm using my carbon black just to kind of form the uh, silhouette of, of what will become uh, some, some boulders uh, that that wave's crashing into. And then using my carbon black, I'm gonna just fill in the rest of of this open space here because I want this to be all dark. This is going to be a, a bit more of a darker painting. I want it to be kind of a um, going on from evening into uh, kind of kind of dusk, um, night starting to come on, but there's still some light in the sky. And I've gone ahead and with my charcoal pencil drawn out our lighthouse here uh, just to give me a little bit of a guide. And um, and now I can know exactly where it's going to live and I can start to kind of form some of the bushes uh, around uh, the house as well. These are going to be tucked behind the house. So I want to get this all worked in first, working from back to front. And then I can go back in here and and really make this lighthouse uh, dark. I want to use this carbon black as my, as my underpainting here um, because I like to do... Uh, really, since this is a dark painting, I, I like to have this dark underpainting that I'm going to use a lot of that underpainting and allow it to show through as I scumble on uh, this this color. We're going to let that completely dry, and then I can also form the, the lighthouse uh, lamp as well, which I've just mixed uh, a crimson and, and a little bit of orange, um, and and I and I don't have I keep a fairly uh, transparent so that some of the leaves uh, behind uh, that tree behind uh, can kind of show through a little bit. Making a, a little bit of a, a nice little white uh, tree here and uh, use mostly light blue colors. Uh, I'm going into uh, kind of uh, my highlights being white and yellow and uh, just kind of dot that those individual leaves on. All right, so I've mixed together uh, umber and a little bit of uh, sienna and uh, a little purple here. And I, I don't have any white on this because I don't want to opaque it. I want that, that dark underpainting to show through. So if I keep it fairly transparent on the brush, then uh, a lot of that color, as you can see, will kind of show through. And, and I think that really adds some interest uh, to, this, to this lighthouse a little bit. So I'm kind of jumping around with with my burnt sienna and some purple and just kind of starting to form um, my, my light regions moving into the dark. The light source is going to be coming from the left. So I want to keep that in mind as, as we paint, uh, as we paint these shapes in. And I wanted to have a, a turquoise uh, colored uh, roof here. So I'm kind of doing the same process of using turquoise moving into more of the blues and uh, purples as well uh, to start to form uh, those those shadows and uh, then just introducing a little bit of orange uh, very very lightly 
over the the lamp in the lighthouse. Um, I'm I'm dry brushing this on, um, and uh, you know you don't need a lot of paint on your brush uh, as you do that. Just kind of want to be conservative and and just allow these subtle transitions to kind of occur. So I'm kind of just building and layering color on top of color here uh, as I move along. And, um, and I'm just kind of using some silver lining here and with uh, just a light yellow that I've mixed together um, just to kind of reflect some of that lamp light that's going to be uh, shining through a little bit here. Forming our windows, uh, just mixing a simple little gray color with my blue and umber, and uh, then I can start to form that. Now I'm using my felt tip pen here, it's got a nice fine head on it, and I can uh, draw these nice straight lines, um, and, and I've discussed that in the past on, on, on using uh, acrylic uh, pens and felt tip pens, I find very, very handy uh, using that. So uh, we'll form the, the fence line now here as well, and I can start moving into the rest of the house, just kind of re-blocking in uh, with carbon black, uh, the, the rooftop and the chimney, and, um, and then I'll have uh, a basic idea about uh, where I want to start this. But it's really kind of the same process we went through with the lighthouse. Um, I'll just use very transparent uh, browns and, and, and umbers and oranges now that uh, I can dry brush uh, on top of, of this nice dark underpainting and really allow that underpainting to start to show through, which, which again I think adds uh, some nice texture and, and uh, keeps the lighthouse fairly dark, which is what I'm really going for. I want to keep kind of a dark painting. Um, that way as we start to introduce uh, some of the lights in the windows, um, they'll really, really pop, and that's kind of what I'm going for here. Um, the darker you can kind of make this painting, the better your lights are really going to show through. And, and this is really just a matter of uh, contrast between our lights and darks here. And so I'm forming uh, the, uh, the lower portion of this. I'm actually introducing some purple and blue now so that I can kind of create some shadow uh, because we're going to have um, kind of an eave um, over the porch and uh, that's going to kind of cast some shadow. But really just kind of uh, working this in um, and a good just to kind of scumble this all, all on first here and get it all nice and blocked in. We can work on where, where our lights and our shadows are going to kind of live and that's going to help to form that three-dimensionality and kind of give it that illusion that uh, this is kind of a three-dimensional um, structure that we're painting in here on this house now. Finish the rooftop here with my turquoise and um, not going to see a lot of the roof of course but um, really wanted to uh, use some complementary colors here since we've got a lot of oranges and reds with those umber colors and those sienna colors that I'm using um, the complement uh, would be those kind of those green tones so I uh, wanted to really complement those colors together with reds and greens and, uh, and then I can just start to kind of form um, you know where where, where the uh, the lights are going to be coming through the windows using using orange uh, to begin with and then slowly building some yellows on top of that and just a little just a little bit of paint you don't need a lot of paint once again you want a lot of that underpainting to show through and uh, just dry brush this on with very little paint uh, as you go at this. So uh, we now can kind of start to see the structure forming here as we start to build uh, this together. But right now I'm just kind of finding where everything's going to be living and that's that's really what I want to kind of go for. I can worry about angles and, and shapes after I get this all kind of painted in here but I wanted to get this blocked in first and um, and then we can kind of move on from there. And this will be my basic guide for myself now. So kind of working on on uh, those those gables there and um, finding the right pitch into that roof, kind of starting to square things up a little bit more. Now I can start to form the windows and, and I've just mixed together a nice light gray color here um, to start to, to form kind of that wood paneling. Uh, around the windows and um, 
and um, you know now I'm kind of really thinking about the, the angles. You want to make sure you're definitely uh, kind of uh, angling those uh, the proper way. I kind of want the viewpoint to sort of be kind of looking up uh, at the house. So um, you know, creating that illusion um, to kind of create that perspective is, is what I'm kind of going for here now. And uh, I'll be using that felt tip pen uh, quite a bit because I'll be forming bricks, uh, a lot of detail, a lot of small, tiny detail. Um, and, and, and when I get that detailed with these little structures um, and doing all these bricks, I want to make sure my lines are all accurate and, and I find it easier to do with, with using the felt tip pen. Um, but uh, before you, uh, after you let this dry and, and before you begin to isolate uh, the painting and varnish it, I would recommend just spraying, just spray paint, not spray painting, but uh, you can get those, those spray cans of varnish and I would recommend first spraying it with the varnish after you've isolated it. Or actually before you isolate it, I would probably do that. Then I'd isolate it, and then I would uh, use a final varnish on top. That's just because the the um, uh, felt tip pen, um, if if you add any uh, wet paint or varnish on top of that, could cause um, those lines to smear. So I've just learned that the hard way, um, as I've been introducing uh, this felt tip pen. But make these lines. Now I can form these bricks, and. Um, and now we just uh, begin to start to see this little house uh, kind of come alive. But you can imagine the work this would be involved if you're using a rigger brush or a, a uh, script liner. Uh, just a lot of work, and it'd be harder to keep those those lines straight. And that's kind of why I like to to use um, these pens. So um, kind of working these these bricks now, and just kind of changing the value a little lighter tones with with the siennas and. And the oranges now to start to form uh, these bricks a little bit better and, and we've got the, the little um, railing now here on the porch and and, um, and these large posts that I'm just kind of painting in with my light gray color now and uh, begin to work kind of this porch region but I'm still thinking about the fact that the light source will be coming from the left so I'll have some subtle um, lighter uh, colors um, on that left side and slowly move that into my grays. So I'm just using a light yellow, um, cadmium yellow and titanium white and then moving that more into uh, my gray mixture which is, is the blue and the and the umber and um, and then I can just kind of give that illusion that, it, that the left side of the building is just a little bit lighter here. But uh, we're forming here the, the, the bottom here of this porch and just kind of Finding where everything lives right now, and and um, get this this uh, little stairwell um, kind of painted in, and we'll form some bushes here around the base of, of this in a moment. So, uh, but um, but yeah, that's that's kind of just how I, I like to to kind of tackle this this little house now. So we get this worked in here and start moving over toward the the right side and um, of, of this building, and and then we can have a little a nice little uh, lighthouse kind of formed here so I'm now creating um, with my purple I've got purple I've got uh, umber a little sienna and I'm making this nice uh, kind of dark uh, grayed out purple color that I'm using for my uh, for my, my little path now so just wanted to kind of have a nice dirt path leading down toward the beach and um, and I'm doing this early in the morning, so I apologize. You see some of the light uh, from my window. I tried to close the blinds as the sun was kind of peeking through in the morning time. That'll eventually go away, but uh, that's kind of what you're seeing there. So um, continue to work this this uh, path, and uh, first I'm forming my, my my little bushes here. And uh, just kind of block those in with car carbon black, and now I'm just using a, a real light kind of uh, green that I've mixed with white and uh, and um, sap green, and and just kind of keeping it silhouetted. Again, this is really 
a dark painting, so I'm just kind of making some basic formations here and, and giving that illusion. And uh, now I can kind of start to bring in my grasses. And I've mixed um, sap green and ultramarine blue to make that kind of bluish green here. And that'll be kind of a nice dark green. But you want to use that underpainting of that black uh, underpainting so that a lot of that shows through. And really kind of creates some depth there as you're jumping around. So don't kill all that underpainting. Once again, really important that you, you really capitalize on using that underpainting. Make your life a lot easier. I've mixed in a pale blue uh, here that, with a little green, uh, just um, I really wanted to lighten that up. I want a little bit of some of some light that's kind of uh, filtering through um, here and, and kind of dappling across the, the grass and, and over the the um, path um, to begin with, and and uh, continue that theme kind of on down and toward the beach. So. But um, keep kind of building this color here on this path, lightening up uh, my purples to uh, kind of create a little, little more uh, structure in that. And now I can move in here and add a little bit of ivy that's kind of climbing up um, across the, the lighthouse. So I've just, I'm just actually adding just carbon black as my, back, my background for that ivy. And then as I start to, to uh, bring in um, my my greens I'm just really just literally dotting this on here now um, and um, now I'm, I've added some some lighter greens now so you can kind of see uh, the dimension here um, with with me just this is simply just dotting this on and you're just taking your time um, and don't rush this adding some red now because I want to have some red little flowers that are growing on that ivy and um, and then just adding a little smoke on the chimney there. So, and I just used ultramarine blue um, by itself, uh, gently adding that chimney smoke. So again, mixed uh, that dark purple with uh, with uh, sienna and some umber, and uh, we're going to form uh, this little kind of brick, uh, kind of a, a, a brick fencing uh, or a little brick wall here with some steps, um, and I'm dappling on lighter purple colors uh, with my tree and texture brush here just to add a little texture um, I want this to look like it's it's just a bunch of little stones and then I can use uh, this is my acrylic uh, paint pen uh, which is really handy uh, to start to draw in those those little stones that are um, kind of laying on top of each other here and, just a, a quick easy way of, of forming this this neat little um, stone uh, fencing um, so come back with some lighter purples and start to really add some dimension here and um, and uh, kind of really look add, add a little bit of uh, that three-dimensionality um, and I want some ivy and some bushes to kind of be uh, encroaching on top of that and overhanging a little bit. So just adding pure uh, carbon black uh, as an underpainting. Now I wanted to have this lamp here in the front. Um, and uh, so just kind of painting in this lamp with my with my first underpainting in black. And uh, and I can use this light gray color uh, to give, give it some dimension um, there. So... Uh, I'll later go back in and, and add a little bit of uh, airbrushing just to kind of create a bit of a nice light haze around some of these these windows and, and these lamps, specifically into the lamp over in the lighthouse uh, portion of the painting. And uh, now we can um, just begin to form those those bushes. I needed to let them dry for a moment before I could go back there and start to to, to dapple on these. Uh, these little leafing structures here, but um, but uh, going back here now and adding a little bit of um, some flowers and different colors, reds and, and, and whites and, and blues, just uh, give it a little bit of variety. Some yellow flowers, um, but this is kind of just building building this along the way, and then I'm I'm going back and just kind of adding some some basic highlights where I think I'm going to see some more of that of the uh, light kind of 
filtering through and where I think it's going to kind of to hit um, those regions there. We got a large bush here in the front now and I literally am just just basically forming this. We're not putting a lot of detail but uh, just wanting to dot on these, these little clumps of, of leaves and you really want to let a lot of that dark underpainting show through. Um, still wanting to kind of continue to kind of keep this uh, really subtle and really dark uh, for, for this type of painting here and, and um, kind of keep with the theme that, that this is going to be um, going into uh, night and it's, we still have some, some light on the horizon and um, wanted to create some, some little flowers there, pink flowers. This is where I'm coming back with my airbrush and I apologize my camera kind of lost its um, um, focus a little bit. I've been working with this brand new camera and just trying to figure it out so I apologize if I go out of focus a little bit. So I've now kind of drawn in our little boat that's going to be sitting there on the shore and some of the stones give me a basic guide about where everything is but uh, just mixed a, a gray color blue and and, and uh, burnt uh, umber to create that that dark kind of grayish color here and I can just start to kind of dry brush and stumble on a little bit of color here and a little bit of separation in the stones and uh, now I can come back and cap those uh, with some lighter gray uh, tones now and really start to kind of form the basic shape uh, of these stones. So I have a lot of a lot of stones here, and uh, and this will be kind of uh, you know f beginning to form the beach a little bit here, uh, and, and give that wave something to crash up against. And uh, now I'm just coming back here and, and, and beginning to add just some basic uh, grasses uh, throughout this. But uh, think about uh, not killing that underpainting. You want to use that dark, that dark base uh, to give you something, uh, you know, to start to form those shadows and, and some, you know, some of the dirt, um, and then come back with my with my uh, rigger brush and begin to really kind of form uh, some individual grasses. I, I want just some some little light areas kind of filtering through and I want to kind of start to form some some long stretched shadows because uh, you know, we, we assume the sun is beginning to really get low on the horizon so it's really going to stretch those shadows quite a bit and that's kind of what I'm thinking about as I'm beginning to form the, the uh, forefront of this painting now bring in some lighter grasses which is really just using the the uh, my, my, my uh, ultramarine blue and um, and green of course with a little yellow uh, to, to kind of achieve that that lighter um, blades of grass uh, to help me with um, with this illusion here so kind of want to seat those gra those uh, stones get them seated in there uh, form the grasses around that and so it really kind of pushes those down into the into the ground and I'm just kind of going through and kind of tweaking here the road and the road's going to have uh, little highlights um, there between uh, those those stretch shadows so I want to think about that I'm just using a, a lighter real pale purple really just using doxazine purple and, and uh, titanium white a little bit of ultramarine blue I want to keep this kind of on the cooler tones uh, as, as I do that. So I got my little ship here and I'm underpainting this with my with my purple and, and umber and uh, that'll give me that nice kind of dark muted uh, grayed out purple color here and um, just kind of blocking this in really um, to let that dry and uh, of course I'm using, using my blow dryer to speed that process up a little bit but just let that dry and then I can start to dry brush on uh, my, my uh, lighter gray tones here and uh, which is just blue and and, uh, and umber and now I can um, begin to slowly start to bring lighter shades of kind of pale yellows um, and, and I can start to form uh, the light 
source uh, from the left of the painting here, uh, kind of striking uh, this little boat. Not a lot of detail needs to go into this, just enough just to kind of give it the indication that this is a little boat floating off in the distance here, and, um, and so just kind of keeping it pretty simple, really. But just take your time and uh, start to form these shapes and uh, you know don't don't rush this it's you're going to be using these little brushes and and trying to get the detail out of that so i'm going to have a little flagpole here that i'm just kind of drawing in real quickly and uh when i have that american flag uh, kind of blowing uh toward the right um and so i'm kind of just adding my gray underpainting and slowly bring in some blues and bringing in some, some lighter grays that will eventually become um, my, my lighter stripes and then my little reds, um, which, uh, you know, just kind of want to start to form um, a little bit of, a, of, a, of a kind of an unfurled uh, kind of waving flag here. And then I want to add this little, this little boat here, so it's blocking that in, and I kind of want to keep this into the red tones. I'm actually using uh, uh, cadmium red and, and uh, sap green, kind of gray that red out, and then slowly introducing lighter reds and oranges. Um, but uh, just dry brushing this on and, um, and getting this kind of formed. So, um, so yeah, we'll get this, this little boat kind of worked in here. Um, I did start by putting the paddles in the boat, but then I later changed my mind and, and uh, painted them back out and actually just leaned them up against the boat. Um, I don't believe I showed that, but, but I will. I didn't like the way the paddles were looking, so I, I wanted to go back through there and change that. So we've got some birds here, and I've already painted some of them in already. Uh, but for the sake of time, just kind of showing you one little bird that I've blocked in with some gray tones and uh, and then just uh, start to to um, bring that little bird in. Now I've, I've switched my palette now from acrylic to oils and I'm now I'm just dabbling on um, more leafing and I'm doing this all in oil now. I really wanted this to be thick so I'm using my palette knife and I'm just uh, dotting on little little dots of um, of color here to form leaves and form some of the flowers um, but I really wanted a thickness and I want a texture now and and so this is actually going on quite thick but uh, I'm just thinking about forming additional structure uh, making this a little a little lighter and um, and really just think about you know where where, where the clumps are going to be and and um, and you just kind of want to really, really kind of form that dimension here, and, and not really kill everything you've already done uh, with with the acrylic underpainting. Um, but this is uh, this is a little technique I like uh, to do, um, and, and I find it really easy and handy just to use that palette knife. But it will take some time, and just being patient as you do that. We're getting to the end of this video, and I appreciate you watching and. And uh, please subscribe. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye now.